Our scripture this morning comes from Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. And as we read it, we ask that you would bless it to our understanding. That we might be doers as well as hearers of it. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let your love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kind and affectionate to one another. In brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be in the same mind toward one another, do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, you will heat coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be unto God. There was a college professor who had spent long years of faithful service at a college, and so uh, they were honoring him one day in an assembly of the students and faculty, and they knew that he liked antiques, so in honoring him, they gave him an antique box they had found. As he stood there at the podium and opened the box, out popped a genie. And the genie said, thank you for freeing me, and I will give you one wish. You can wish for wealth, or honor, or wisdom. Well, being a college professor, he knew what his answer better be. And so he said, I wish for wisdom. And so the genie said, it is yours. And poof, disappeared. So all the congregation or audience or whatever they were out there were waiting to hear what pearl of wisdom <coughs> would be with his next thought. And after thinking for a minute, the professor said, I should have taken the money. <laughs> well, no genies appear for us in order to... Uh, to make us make decisions like that. Uh, but sometimes we do have tough choices to make. A lot of things in life we don't really have a choice about. You know, some things are forced upon us or they're ours by birth or where we live or whatever. But to a great extent, you know, we can choose our lives, choosing how we live and how we react to things. You know, I could not choose really to be a professional basketball player. Uh, I might want to do that, but since I'm short and fat and slow and have absolutely no skill, I probably won't be able to play professional basketball. But there are a lot of things in sports I could do if I loved sports that much that would be just as fulfilling. So while we may not be able to do some things, we can choose others. And the truth of the matter is, life is, and I'm sure you've had it said before, life is too short to choose things that leave us in misery. Life is too short to choose to be hateful or to live in anger or to live in envy or worry or greed, to live in backbiting or with grudges or fighting or strife or with anything else that causes such sickness and misery in our lives. But the good news that we celebrate particularly this morning is that in Christ Jesus, with his salvation that he brings to us, the good news is that not only is life too short for these things, but thinking about the eternal life we have in Christ Jesus, life is also far too long to live in such things. Because in the vastness of eternity, thinking of the glory that we will live in with Him, what were the little things that we get so upset over and so worried about and so fearful over and so angry over, what will those things mean 
in the span of eternity. Undoubtedly, in the light of eternity, in the light of God's overwhelming love and goodness that Christ showers upon us, those things that we spend so much time worrying about and getting angry over in this world, we're probably seeing like silly childhood fears and spats do to us now. So how should we live in light of eternity? How should we live in light of the gifts that God gives to us? Christ came, and when he came, he brought not only salvation, but a whole new way of life that the world had not seen, that the world did not expect, and that the world still does not expect. And we can see, particularly in this rather sublime passage that we read this morning from Romans, how we should live. Very simply put forward, but very strongly. He says, let love be true and simple. Don't let it be two-faced or don't play the games of complication that so often come with love in this world the way we humans often love. Well, I love this, but not that. And I say I love this, but I don't really, and, and so on and so forth. We play games with love. Let our love be true and simple. We are to stay away from what is evil and to cling to what is good. We are to be kind to one another, honoring one another, and putting one another first, looking to each other's needs. We're to serve the Lord in the Holy Spirit, not flagging in zeal, but in great joy and peace by the power of the Spirit, having hope and the happiness and joy that goes with it to serve the Lord. When trials come, we are to deal with those trials with patience and with prayer. We're to be hospitable to everyone. And we are to look especially to one another's needs, as well as the needs of those around us. We are to be with each other and standing with each other, whether we are living in times of joy or sorrow, to support one another in our lives. We are to stay away from what is haughty, from what the world holds up as what is good for us. But instead, we ought to hang out with those that are humble in the Lord. When people seek us out, to make us targets for their anger or hate or envy or greed or grudges. We're not to respond like the rest of the world with yet more of the same, but instead we're to confound them by blessing them and not cursing them. We are to regard the good things in the world and not even give even the slightest praise for what is evil. We're not supposed to give in to wrath or hate or vengeance because that stuff is endless. Instead, we're to leave the vengeance to the Lord, who promises us that he will bring justice. We're not to repay evil for evil. That will just let evil take over our lives. But instead, we are to face evil and overcome it with what is good. And we are told that as much as it is within our power to do so, we should live at peace with everyone around us. And doesn't that sound like a wonderful life? That sounds like the way that we ought to live. Isn't this peace and love and goodness what our hearts and really what the hearts of every human cries out for? It's certainly what the world needs. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, in truth, we can choose these things. We can choose to live this way. Even in the face of those things we don't choose that we have to face. We can still yet choose to live the way God calls us to. And we can do so not only because life is too short to live otherwise, but because in Christ Jesus, life is too long to spend it living otherwise. Life's experience will let us look back on all the worries and fears and preoccupations and fads and things that we, we look at. And like adults who have grown and look back at children, we will shake our heads because we realize that in Christ Jesus, what the world offers up are nothing but empty bottles. And these things we worry about are useless. The world offers fool's gold, but God offers the real thing. So let's make a conscious effort every day, a prayerful effort, a spiritual effort, the knowledge of the Word of God to choose peace over conflict, to choose truth over lies, to choose what is good over evil, to choose kindness even in the face of meanness, to choose generosity even in the face of greed, to choose humility 
in a world that is puffed up and haughty. To choose love over the hate that sometimes surrounds us. To choose hope over despair. And to choose mercy over revenge. And in doing all these things, the scripture tells us that we'll be choosing life over death. For Jesus came, not only that we might have eternal life, but as he said himself, he came to bring us life and that we might have it more abundantly. A life full of his peace and love and not full of the world's strife and misery. So when it comes time to make a choice, and we choose every day a great many things about how we're going to live and respond, let us remember that life is not only too short, but too long to choose darkness in any shade or form. Choose life and choose life. And in doing so, we will choose the better way that the Lord has brought for us. Let us pray. Lord, on this Christmas day, we thank you not only for our salvation, but we thank you for the life and light and peace and love that you give us even in this world. Just a foreshadowing, just a foretaste of what will be poured out upon us in the world to come. But enough to keep us in this world. And enough to pour out of our lives and sharing with the lives of others. Lord, let us live in your peace and joy not only on Christmas Day, but in every day of our lives. In the name of Christ Jesus we pray. Amen.